Hey guys, it's Christina. Welcome back to my channel. And I thought I would do just a casual chit chat, uh, end of the year <laughs> review for y'all today. So I got the cozy fall vibes going on right now. I got a velvet plaid jacket on that I thrifted. I got a cup of coffee. I got some cute little furry friends in the background right there. Two of them are purses, Snoopy and Binks. And then in the middle, I got my gizmo that I got from Build-A-Bear. And uh, <laughs> I can't see any of them while I'm filming this. I can just barely see myself moving around a little bit. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to talk to y'all about my 2022 year in review. I feel like the year flew by, but it's been a pretty awesome one. So we're gonna talk about a mix of personal and professional things in my life. So the first thing I wanted to talk about are film festivals. I attended a lot of virtual film festivals this year. I love supporting those. I love the fact that a lot of festivals are still continuing to make their content accessible for people who don't live locally. Um, so this year I attended a virtual South by Southwest and Tribeca Film Festival and Chattanooga Film Festival and one day of the Sundance Film Festival, not the whole thing. Um, I think last year I actually took some of my vacation time to attend all of Sundance Film Festival, but this year I decided I was just going to do one day of it. And of course I can't forget the Overlook Film Festival. I volunteered there in person for the second year in a row and um, it's a lot of fun. I love the fact that the horror community comes into town for it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it uh, gives you a new appreciation for your city when, you know, you've been living somewhere your entire life and, you know, you kind of get, you kind of get jaded a bit. You kind of take things for granted. But then when people from out of town come visit and they see things for the first time and they get excited about the food and the touristy spots and everything, it kind of gives you a new appreciation for your hometown. And also to kind of go along with that, I became a brand ambassador for Fingoria a month or two ago. Um, so that's really exciting and I'll leave the information uh, for that below because there are certain things you can order from their website and you can get a 20% off uh, discount on your entire order. Another event that I got to go to in person this year was Joe Bob's Jamboree which was in Memphis, Tennessee. That was my only vacation this year, but it was a wonderful vacation. It was my birthday present to myself. Um, I'm typically not a night person, as y'all know, but I can be if I have to be for film industry stuff. So um, it was a lot of fun getting to meet people that I've known from the Mutant fam, uh, to meet them in person and watch movies together at the drive-in all night. And uh, it was fun going to Graceland again, even though I got separated from my tour group and got lost. <laughs> um, but anyway, it gave me a story to tell. <laughs> Next year, they'll be doing the Jamboree for the third year in a row. And they like moving it around. The first year it was on the East Coast. This year it was, um, gosh, I don't even know what area you would call Tennessee. But it was in Tennessee. And then <laughs> next year they're going to do it on the West Coast. And I'm not that familiar with the West Coast, but I would imagine it's probably going to be expensive. So I'm saving up my money and uh, looking forward to that. I actually, Diana had asked me if I wanted to be a judge for this year's Jamboree uh, to judge the, the films that were up for consideration. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe she just forgot. But anyway, maybe that's something I can do next year. We'll see. Or maybe they need volunteers in person. I don't know. And speaking of Diana Prince, she was actually here in New Orleans for uh, the AEW show when it was around in the springtime. And so that was a lot of fun to go to that with her. I offered to pay her back for it. She wouldn't let me pay her back, but, um, you know, hopefully I can treat her to something someday. Um, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. It was a new experience for me. I feel like there's there's pros for both going in person and also watching on TV. Um, before I had gone in person, I'd actually started watching it on TV a few weeks prior. And I feel like when you watch the wrestling on TV, it's, you know, you get a close up view of what's going on in the ring and you're getting that commentary from the announcers, which is helpful for me because I'm visually impaired and I can't really tell too much of what's going on. 
And then when you go in person, it's more of like, like the feeling you get from being there in the environment, you know, like people are there holding up signs and chanting and singing and rooting for certain wrestlers. And it's very cool. Another person I got to visit with while they were in town was Andrew from Freaks and Psychos podcast. Um, he and his significant other and I all went out to Panera Bread and it was a lot of fun. I'd, I'd never met him in person before, so it was nice that we all got to chat and know each other a little bit. And um, I interviewed him on my channel a while ago, so I'll go ahead and link that video for y'all. But um, I feel like it, it really says a lot about a person when they, you know, make time for you and want to see you, whether it's you visiting their city or them visiting your city. I also got my home library installed this year, which really adds to the coziness of the house. I also got a new guitar teacher this year. I'll admit I've only had a few classes with him. Um, around the time that I started, he was going on tour and then he and his wife celebrated the birth of their first child. And um, so I kind of just wanted to, to give him a little bit more of a break so that he could spend more time with the baby because as we all know, babies aren't going to stay little forever. So, you know, considering the fact that, you know, the baby's first Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's were coming up, I was like, I was like, that's okay. I'll pick it back up again in, in uh, 2023. I've still been continuing acting classes. Um, I still kind of take a mix of classes locally and um, out of town. I took an introductory class with the Groundlings Improv Group online earlier this spring. And then in November and December, I took a acting technique class with the Howard Fine Studio. I also just recently did an interview with Sledgehammer Horror on his YouTube channel. And um, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description. He does a lot of interviews with people in the horror community talking about the first horror movie that uh, made an impression on them. So on his YouTube channel, we talked about Poltergeist 3 um, because the Poltergeist trilogy was definitely one of my favorites as a kid. I loved, um, when I was a kid, I always loved movies that had characters around my own age, you know, that I could identify with. So I know I'm late to the game, but I actually got rid of traditional cable this year due to the cost. And um, I learned a lot about myself in this journey that I took from getting rid of the traditional cable to just doing streaming. So I got rid of the traditional cable and then I started checking out cable alternatives. Uh, I did free trials of Fubo, YouTube TV, and Philo. And I timed it so that I was doing all of these free trials. So that way I was able to get all of my spooky season content for free. Um, Cause those are some of the providers that have the majority of channels. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on the topic and I find that basically the more channels you want in your alternative cable streaming package, um, the more money it's going to cost you because it costs a lot for these uh, providers to have local channels and sports channels on their platforms. So uh, I originally was thinking that I wanted quantity over quality. And then I eventually, I, I ended up deciding to go with, uh, with the blue package from Sling which is not as expensive as some of the other uh, options out there, which is good. Um, it doesn't have as many channels, but it has the channels that I would primarily use anyway. And I wanted something that would be kind of just a seamless transition without paying too much money. Um, and I'm also really loving the uh, the free ad supported um, content that's out there. There are a lot of apps that you can get on the Roku or the Fire Stick, whichever one you use. I had no idea that I could watch, you know, vintage movies or music videos or even some modern day TV shows on these apps. It's still kind of odd to me that when I'm scrolling around online, there are people who complain about ads. 
Like they would much rather pay to get rid of the ads. And I feel like for some of the apps that I use, that kind of makes sense. But at the same time, the way I think of it is, is that if all we had was the traditional antenna TV, there would be ads, you know. And a lot of people aren't thinking of this from the business standpoint of, you know, there are people whose livelihoods and paychecks come from a career of making ads. There are actors who have entire careers based off of commercials. Um, there are people like Barry Manilow who wrote, wrote a lot of jingles for commercials. Um, there's those famous Super Bowl ads that we all know and love. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just interesting to me to, to hear different people's viewpoints on whether they're pro-advertisements or anti-advertisements when they're watching TV. I haven't done a lot of decluttering videos on this channel lately, but behind the scenes I've been decluttering a lot. I actually just gave away six boxes of clothes, uh, six bags rather, of clothes and accessories to the Salvation Army. Um, and a lot of what I've been getting rid of are kind of my basic bags, I guess you'd say. Um, you know, back when YouTube originally started, you know, I got sucked in like a lot of people do to, you know, the large makeup collections and the designer handbags and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. And so I went through that phase for a while and um, some of the stuff I do still like. It, it kind of just, you know, depends on what it is. But I realized over time that, you know, like luxury and designer handbags overall just aren't they're not me, you know, like, I've spent my entire life liking horror movies and, you know, pop culture type things. So, you know, I'm more into like novelty purses and, um, you know, pumpkin purses and that kind of thing. Yeah, there's part of me that likes kind of the trendy stuff from the 80s and 90s and Y2K era. But as far as the luxury and designer stuff, I feel like sometimes you're just paying for the name. Last thing I wanted to talk about was health and fitness. Um, I'm trying to start my 2023 uh, goals early so that that way once the new year gets here I can already kind of have a bit of a routine. So I've been I've been working out a little bit. Um, at least once a week I'll go to the gym in my office building and uh, use the elliptical machine or the exercise bike. I haven't really done much as far as changing my diet. You know, I used to be the type of person that would try to go cold turkey and cut out certain foods, um, coffee for example, and what I learned about myself over the years from constant trial and error is I'm not the type of person that can just completely cut things out because then, you know, days or a week will go by and I'm craving that food or drink twice as much. And so then I get I give in and I end up getting it. So um, I'm definitely been trying to cut back on certain things. Coffee, for example, I'm not really supposed to have because of acid reflux. Although, to be honest with you, I really think I have silent reflux because I can't feel that much of the symptoms. Um, luckily, they're not as extreme as what some people experience, but. At the same time, I know I shouldn't be drinking it. So what I've been doing is alternating um, between coffee and tea in the mornings. And the other change that I've made is, unless there's a rare exception, I'm for the most part not eating after 6 p.m. So that's my year in review. I hope y'all found it interesting. Um, let me know what some of your favorite things you accomplished this year were. And please give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.